So this was about effective uh, catheter surgical coverage. Uh, now I would like to invite Dr. Shovik. Dr. Shovik is 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 a co-instructor in the course, and he'll be talking about effective refractive coverage as well as about press biopsia. Dr. Shovik. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I will be talking about the refractive error coverage and press biopia. So in continuation of the talk given by Dr. Praveen, the refractive error coverage is also defined as the proportion of people who have received either refractive surgeries or spectacles out of the total number of people who are in need of these services. The calculation is quite similar to the effective cataract surgical coverage Simply speaking, if we have four people who use spectacles, there may be two people who have presenting vision worse than 612. And suppose we have uh, people operated with refractive surgeries like LASIK and SMILE, there will be few people who still have presenting vision less than 612 in the better eye. And there will be the denominator, those people who neither use spectacles or are operated with LASIK but still need those services who are the denominator. So the numerator becomes those people who have a visual acuity greater than 612 in the better eye. That is the met need, which may be uh, with spectacles or with refractive surgery. And the denominator will be those people who are in need of these services. So again, the target, as mentioned by Dr. Praveen, is a 40 percentage point increase of effective refractive error coverage. In our country, though we don't have a national data, sub-national data from different regions tell that we have around 60% or 50% coverage in uh, different states. So we can achieve, we can target for a cent percent coverage by 2030. Similar is the calculation for near vision uh, coverage which is defined as the proportion of people who have received presbyopic spectacles in comparison to those who are in need of these spectacles. The calculation is quite similar, met need divided by met plus undermet plus unmet need. Simply speaking, if two people, presbyopic persons are uh, using spectacles and have presenting vision worse than N6, it is undermet need, and when you divide the met need by the undermet need plus met need plus unmet need, that gives you the refractive error coverage for near vision. So from the national survey that we had conducted uh, 2019, we found a prevalence of uncorrected presbyopia in population aged more than 50 years as 74.2% which is quite high. We don't have data from the national uh, uh, surveys on ERC, but we do have sub-national surveys, which tell that uh, ERC in different regions range from 50 to 60%. Uh, I think Dr. Vashisht will talk about uh, this school health program. Uh, okay. And uh, I will conclude my uh, talk with a uh, short presentation on presbyopia. The burden of presbyopia is huge. Uh, according to World Report on Vision, around 1.8 billion people have presbyopia around the world, which is one fourth of the total world population. It, it has a huge global productivity uh, loss and uh, uh, there is a projection that this problem will keep on rising with aging population. Age is a most important risk factor, others being gender, uh, occupation, drug use, and geographical areas. So these things we already know, the pathophysiology. Simply speaking, how we measure presbyopia is near vision versus than N6 or N8 at 40 centimeter or customary working distance. This is the WHO standardized definition, which we use for assessing the prevalence of presbyopia in our uh, center. If we see uh, South Asia uh, region, it is uh, 
people with unaddressed presbyopia, the proportion is so high. If you compare this with high income countries, the corrected presbyopia is much more than the uncorrected. But the situation in South Asian countries and Southeast Asian countries is quite different. So uh, the simple intervention, a functional uh, intervention is a spectacles. These are uh, very easy to uh, provide and they have a huge impact on the productivity. Many studies have been conducted which have reported that a simple pair of spectacles can give a huge productivity boost for these uh, presbyopic persons. Now again I doctor invite Dr. Praveen for a talk on the methodology of the Ravi surveys. In fact before going to methodology I would like to express that refractive error. Refractive means you just need a pair of spectacles. When WHO started the definition of blindness way back in, 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 in 1974, they just use a definition as best corrected visual acuity because they assume that refractive error will not be at all a burden and you uh, the people, everyone can use spectacles and there is no need to discuss about refractive error as a cause of blindness and visual impairment. In 2003 only, they realized that no, even refractive error is a problem and people are not using spectacles at all. Af only after that we get data about that this is uh, as refractive as a proportion of our blindness or visual impairment. And you will surprise to know that at this stage, whatever data is there, in most of the surveys what we get is refractive error is a leading cause of visual impairment globally. Leading cause. Nearly 50% of visual impairment is due to refractive error. I remember the wording of Alan Foster, he always used to say that it is shame on us that we are not even able to provide a pair of spectacles to, 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 to our people so that they should not remain blind or visually impaired due to refractive error. We conducted national blindness survey in 50 plus population and refractive coverage actually is to be assessed in younger population also, even children also. That, that, is, that is one thing. When Ministry, when WHO came out with these two latest indicators, that cater effective cater surgical coverage and effective refractive coverage, we were able to give data on effective cater surgical coverage. But unfortunately, we could not provide data on effective refractive coverage. So a global indicator, we are 25,000 ophthalmologists in India. We don't have a good data about effective refractive error coverage. This is the current status in our country. In fact, uh, for school children, we assess ki what is the current need and, and what is the actual achievement. Government of India in their school vision screening program, in which they are running since 1994, even now the targets are 10 lakh, uh, 10 lakh children to be given spectacles every year. These are the target. And we assess, when we assess, we did a meta-analysis, a PLOS study was there in which last 40 year studies were taken, all the studies in, in schools, uh, school going children. And, and as per their study, what realized that the prevalence of myopia among school children, average prevalence at this stage is around 8%. If I use this figure to calculate the total number of children in 5 to 15 age group who require spectacles, that comes around 2 crore, 20 million children. Government of India is having a target of 1 million and actual need is 20 million per year. You can see the gap. Only 5% children, they are actually being provided services. And that too affected in COVID. COVID, nobody, the schools were not open, so that was not going on. So this is one area we are hugely lacking the effective refractive error coverage in our country, actual number. Even for press biopia, as Dr. Shovik has mentioned, if you see other countries, the press biopia coverage is very good. But in our country, specifically India, it is assumed that hardly 25% of the people who are press biopic, they are actually using spectacles. Just 25%. 75% of press biopic, they are not using spectacles. You can find out reason for this thing, but this is the current status. So what we suggested to government of India, that we need a kind of survey methodology where any district, district level, there are around 740 districts in the country, they should be able to conduct survey 
they their team members either medical college or district hospitals and they should be able to provide data related to effective cataract surgical coverage and effective refractive coverage we submitted a proposal to who cro they accepted our proposal we 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 conducted this study in two districts in in in, in gurgaon and on one district we thought we should select one if they can do it then anybody can in 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 our country can do it so that was lakshadeep was chosen in lakshadeep we have state program officers and few optometrists we trained their team to conduct this survey and finally we realized that even that team did a very good survey and they have got some award in their in, in their in their uni, uh, ut through through their health secretary so this is 